out there in YouTube land. This is Jan and Christian's with me and you guys know the drill when Christian's with me. It's a vlog time and this one's going to be an old vlog because we're going to a movie from 2013, right? Yeah, yeah I'll explain why and wherefore and how this came to be in a minute. Yeah, uh, yeah we're going to be doing an oldie but a baddie. Um, I'll explain, uh, this, uh, 2013 is the movie we will be vlogging, but it's a movie i never seen and I'll get into it in a minute, but before we actually get into our vlog, we have to take a personal minute here because we have to send out a huge heartfelt thank you. Um, as I mentioned in a couple of my other videos, my son Sparky turns, uh, he, he is 17 now, he turns 17 like this a wild man now, sing the song. Sauce it's not your birthday Ooh. anymore, I can hit you. Um, uh, it, it, it was his birthday on Sunday, and we got a package in the mail today, or he got a package in the mail, and uh, he just, it was like the best birthday present this boy can have. Aww. As you see by the shirt, he's a Ramones fan, Aww. and he's a record collector, Aww. and so my my sister over at the Horror of the Horror sent the boy a package, and show everyone what she, your wonderful aunt. And now what do you have to say to your aunt? <laughs> it's legit, thanks. It means a lot, it? so, yeah. He's not much on talking. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, no, legit, it does mean a lot. So I do appreciate it. So, say thank you, Aunt Jenna. Thank you, Aunt Jenna. It, it sounds really good, by the way. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. He's been, and we, I had a hard time pulling him away from his record player so we can do the Especially vlog. considering we, what we had to watch. Yeah, but again, thanks, Jenna. You have no idea how much this means to us. You are like a wonderful sister and a great aunt. Wow. So, yeah. So now that we've gotten the personal things out of the way, now we got to go to less pleasant business. Yeah. Oh, what? wait, wait. Before, before, let me, let me set the scene. How we did this is we saw a tag about uh, the, the, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise. And it was a very cool tag. And uh, Christian and I were talking, and he's like, you've never seen Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3D, have you, Mom? And we went back and forth, and I can't believe you haven't seen all the movies yeah. out of the franchise, and man. And you call yourself a chainsaw fan. I am, but see, around that time, I just become a new mommy again, and I, I didn't watch as many movies that's as I did. That's now. kind of your area where you know, where you missed a lot of big horror movies that came out around like 2009 yeah. to 15 ish is kind of where you're kind of I fell off black. the wagon a little bit so so I did and I've heard from not only Sparky but other people going it's probably the worst in the front like people legitimately I think are torn between if this movie's worse or if Generations is worse yeah. um, but you your vote goes for this one I entirely vote for this one because you want to know why I say this is worse than Next Generation why because at least Next Generation's bad. I'm not going to dispute that. It's a terrible movie. But it did have one saving grace, and that is Matthew McConaughey's batshit crazy performance in it. Yeah, it did. What did this have that was memorable? Can you name me one thing that you're going to remember in a couple of months from this movie? Okay, I guess this is where we get to our positive and negatives. Oh, uh, surprisingly, and I did not like this movie, Booze and Ghouls. Spoiler, I did not like this movie. Um, but I do have a few positives. I would, I, I loved some of the people in this movie, the tiny little bit of screen time we get them. We get like a nanosecond of Gunnar Anderson, may he rest in peace. We got Bill Mosley, he actually got some dialogue. We, we, we've we got Jim Fesden in it too. Yeah, yeah, He's getting a our, whole whopping yeah, we, 10 get, lines yeah, of dialogue. Yeah, we get Larry Fesden of like Wendigo and if you've seen enough of her videos, you know who the hell that is by now. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm a fan of the man and I, I'm beginning to think that if anyone offers him anything in a movie, he'll take it just on some sort yeah. of principle, which is really cool, but why were you in this? Well, also, how else is he going to make Wendigo, the Wendigo movies or something? you got to get money for movies somehow. And Toby Hooper and Kim Hinkle were, were a part of this too, although I think Toby Hooper was just in it because, you know, uh, the, um, the first movie yeah. and all that. Remi and, and remind you, Ken Fankel did write and direct Next Generation, so he's a lot more le loose with this series. Yeah, 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 but you know, it's just... 
it's, 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 it's not. It's not good. Uh, let me good uh, let me think. Besides, can I say anything else? Some of the, the scenes are okay. The gore scenes, like when he's cutting the one guy in the basement. Mm -hmm. But even there, it's very tepid, very weak. Um, yeah. Do I have any other positives to say? Because I don't like to. Sh I I don't like to be an asshole, but. This one was bad, guys. This, really bad. this one was really bad. Um, yeah. I have a lot. This is definitely one gen has a lot more negatives than positives. Yeah. Um, oh, where do I start with the positives? Okay, I guess the biggest thing, and not only is it a negative, but it's just if you're someone who thinks about this, the timeline is going to really mess with your head. Lazy writing is this movie's worst. Six writers. This movie has. Six goddamn writers. Yes, I can. don't know any movies that have six writers. They, Jesus Christ! They exist, but usually those are some of your worst ones. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it does. And also, and, and Christian will love this because you already know. But uh, the director of this movie also directed another movie that Christian's not a fan of. Directed uh, Jason Goes to Hell, which Sparky here hates. I don't like Goes to Hell. I do. I, it's the worst of the final uh, Friday the Thirteenth movies, and this is the worst Chainsaw movie. Can't wait to see what he does with Elm Street and Halloween. <laughs> but but I, uh, I don't hate Jason Goes to Hell. We've been over this. It has Duke and that movie. I love Duke. I just. Too. That scene is the greatest scene. Save it for when you want to do it. <laughs> um, uh, but, but, but yeah, this, this movie just... Uh, but anyway, the timeline, I'm sorry, this movie, I was thinking about the movie for a minute, I was kind of like going away from you people. Look at the I'm carrot, knee so, I, I know, right? <laughs> um, but, uh, but the timeline, okay, so uh, this movie, okay, where... Explain it like you did to me. Okay, so basically, this is the sixth timeline of the Chainsaw oh. series. If you if you're playing if you're playing along, you have first film, and then you have the second film, which is a, which follows the first film. That's its own little timeline. Then three goes and ignores the second film and just goes off the first film. Yeah. Then four does the same, but uh, four does the same and ignores the third and second film. Then we have the remake and its sequel. Then we have this movie, which ignores everything <laughs> but the first film and technically Leatherface because it was put out by the same company and they did say in marketing that it was a prequel to this movie. So currently we are on timeline six and the and the only two movies that matter this one are Leatherface from last year and the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh god. Yeah. Cross side. Um oh, oh. Uh, while you were doing that, I was doing my eyes, so yeah. I have a major headache now. Uh, yeah, uh, but I, did, I, I didn't even, I was hoping you wouldn't even, that one's too convoluted, it makes my head hurt. I was talking about the year timeline. Oh, the year timeline! Okay, so this movie also, okay, so this movie opens up with the, like, legit, like, probably, like, a couple minutes, like, Sally's probably is still in the back of the truck. It opens up, cops come to the Sawyer, uh, Sawyer Ranch right after the end of the first film. Yeah. And this is where the problems start, because it's it set like exactly like almost exactly after the first film. And we have like this shoot off. We have Bill Mosley playing Creighton, who was the cook from the first film, and we have Gunner playing a random Sawyer member, yeah. which is another problem. This movie has so many goddamn Sawyers that come out of nowhere. Yes, I know some of them are Carsons, which was the family from the remake. Um, which was kind of a cute little nod, but still, where the hell were most of these people for the events of the first movie? I think they were in Florida on vacation. Okay, they were. It's the extended. It's the extended cut. Yeah. They're in the extended special edi edition with in 4K. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Okay, so like the whole family's bunkered down, and we basically have like a Waco situation where this one cop, the sheriff Hooper. You know, because to remind everybody, get it? Get it? Yeah, Sheriff yeah. yeah, Sheriff Hooper, and he's actually a decent sort, and he's telling him, you know what, just give us the boy. And the fi family's fighting amongst themselves, but, and one of, the, actually it's Gunner who says it right, that it's, it's simple. A, yeah, it's simple, yeah. and then it's, the, and, um, and give him the boy, he's simple anyway, and Bill Mosley goes, but he's family. Yeah. 
but eventually they're gonna they're gonna give the the you know presumably Leatherface or Jebediah mm -hmm. um, to the cops, and it's supposed to be very peaceful. Everyone has guns, but it's gonna be peaceful. And then we get like a, what a homage what Frankenstein created yeah. so many years ago. We get the angry, except this one's a hillbilly mob. Woo, doggy, we're gonna burn us down some soils. Yeah, cause cause we're in Texas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and there's some lines. There's also some really stupid you know. Lines. I know we're in the minority for liking Leatherface, but you know that really I love fun, Leatherface. We both love that movie, but we you know that really funny line in the diner. You know, gets the shotgun, cocks I it. Fucking I love, fucking love Texas. Yeah. That was funny and made sense for the scene. Yeah. There is multiple instances of one-liners where characters are are, are almost ba or basically are gonna die if they don't do act immediately and they have. And they make time for one-liners. Okay, um, but one thing with the family before I forget my one. Chainsaws don't make you bullet. That's bullet. another line. Do you think, cuz we'll get to these in a minute? Um, before I forget my one positive, I okay. will give this movie. This is actually really cool. Is any of you Matt, a big chainsaw fans? You would know that the guy who played Grandpa in the original oh, was a teenager. Was actually a teenager, and it was all makeup. They brought him back to play Grandpa with very minimal makeup now because he's basically about as old as Grandpa is. So, yeah, we, that is my one thing plus Bill Mosey and Henderson. But, and I think we get a few other, like, scant, uh, scant member, uh, former te uh, Texas Chainsaw characters. Yeah, in there, Tinker too. from 3. Yeah, I think Tinker from 3 is in, the, is in there. I'm pretty sure a couple of the family members from the remake, like the actual actors, show up. So, yeah. Um, so that was my one positive. They brought back some old actors, and it was really cool to get the original actor for Grandpa back. That's they killed old... Grandpa! They killed Grandpa! And in the first minute! Bastards! I know. But, and this movie just goes downhill from here. But This opening scene is the best part of the movie. Yeah, basically. And we have this way it goes. But these dumb hillbillies come, and it was going to be a peaceful transaction. And, of course, they start coming, and shots get fired, and, and the Sawyers start firing at the cops, and everyone, it ends in bloodshed, yeah, basically. Yeah, basi basically all the Sawyers and the Carsons are dead. And we see this woman holding a baby, and you think, oh, it's a shootout, that's not good. Yeah. And um, she eventually, she, she, it turns into a firebomb, everybody dies, yay. And she manages to get away from the fire, and she's still holding the baby. And one of these hillbillies sees her and takes the baby, and then kicks her in the head and kills her. Yeah. And it turns out his wife has a rotten uterus. That's exactly <laughs> the line they state. Yeah, basically. And um, really wanted a baby, so they just keep the baby to themselves. And nobody. And this is this is an important piece of thing to know about the film. Nobody but these two ignorant rednecks know about this little girl. Yeah. Yeah, you think, um, and everyone else is dead except Grandma, which, well, that, ow! This is the problem, because any of you who saw a lot of things, Vera lives through this, but we never learned how she lived through this. I assume she was off somewhere else, but yeah, Vera lives, and now I guess we, now we, after, after that, we cut to modern, to good old modern time. Yeah. Um, uh, here's where the time hard fuckery begins. <laughs> Okay, like I said, it, it, the movie opens beginning of the first film. Yeah, which was in the second. In 1975, I want to say, is when the first film came out. 74, Close it up. 74, somewhere in there. Um, so that's when exactly... You've got your timeline better than this movie yes. does. Yes, yes, I do. And then we cut to... It's okay, you know... 18 years later? I have no god... It ha Okay, if I did the math right, it would have to be at least like 40 years after, but that timeline makes no goddamn sense. So, as far as we know, the movie makes you think that it's like probably set in like the 90s or maybe the early, late 80s. Problem with that though, they show two gravestones in the movie. One says 1999, the other says 2012. This is why the problem comes in, because our main character is the baby from the opening, and she can't be any more than 20. 1975 or 18, 2012. I'd say. Kind of a big gap there. She should be at least late 30s, early 40s, and Leatherface should be in his 80s. Don't mention that at all. Yeah, and then another thing is, I am assuming she's about 18. 
I'm gonna go with 20 just so the timeline's a little less fucked, but the timeline's still super and, fucked. And, and you know what else is funny, people? There's like a lot of like, see, we know our shit, people, because we see this girl that, you know, was the baby, and she works at a butcher shop. Yeah. You know, kind of like a slaughterhouse. Mm -hmm. Can you see the connection, see? And she makes artwork out of animal bones. Yeah, because, you know, the bones from the first one. Never reference a better movie in your own movie, yeah, that, that's people. movie making 101. Yeah, but and she gets this letter and, and and she's inherited this house and she finds out that these two people were not her family. And this is again, I asked Christian because the lawyer that gives her all this information goes, "How did you all find me? You were never lost." lost. Then, AKA, oh, fucking like, know. like the grandmother knew she yeah. was living, and, and they kind of explained it a little bit toward the end. Cause but she, it still has problems. It does, because she, she goes, you were safer with these people than coming back to them. But see, but if you see Leatherface, you know Vera is very protective over her family members. Yeah. And that whole her whole arc in that movie is getting her is getting Leatherface back. And then, the, then the whole Jebediah thing is different. Yeah, it's Ow. so goddamn. Messed up, especially oh, with Leatherface after this and being a sequel, even though the timelines don't match at all. But you know what? Screw it. Chainsaw's never had a consistent timeline. But Time frame is the problem of this movie, whether it's actually set, what year it's actually set in. Okay, but this is kind of almost, it is an important thing, but it's kind of nitpicking considering this movie's other problems. The problem is, is this movie is just boring. I, you is. know everything it's that's gonna brutal. happen. You, she has a few friends. She goes to the uh, to the um, to the house that she inherits, and the house she inherits is not like the one we get in the original. Because it's it got burned house. down. Which I don't know. I get why they tried to do this, but it kind of failed because they show they have the original set for the like at least the closest thing to the original house. I get why they changed the house around. But it leads to some major problems of how, so the swords were just stupid rich this whole time. Well, Vera did marry rich from Yeah, but you know the problem about that is, oh, that isn't explained until, that is a thing that's fixed by Leatherface. Oh. That is an, that is a problem in this movie itself, ignore it, because Leatherface didn't come out until like three years after this movie, so that's kind of a problem there. Little bit, but it, let's just not even do Screw this. Screw the timeline. No more mentioning of it. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it is bad. I'm not like giving. I'm not giving that a pass. No. It's just there's so many other things wrong. If we delve too much in the timeline, it's gonna be a three-hour video. It is. And it's gonna make your nose bleed and head explode. Um, but 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 it's just this movie is so boring. She goes to 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 inherit the house. She has some friends and they're driving in a van, kind of yeah, like the first like the one. Original. They made a hitchhiker, kind of like the first one. Yeah, and and they go and they and the lawyer and you know you you should be. I don't consider myself a bright person, but the way this lawyer's acting, he doesn't want to go in the house with him. He just gives him the keys and keeps telling her, you got to read this letter from your grandmother. It'll explain everything. And there's just something there that you think, wait a minute here. Yeah. And she asks, how did y'all find me? You were never lost. AKA the that writer. pissed me off. AKA the writer's going, wait, huh? Oh crap, the script's due out in two minutes. <laughs> uh, just write that in real quick. Genius. Yes. Um, we are smart six. We are a smart group of six writers. Yeah. I'm never gonna get over this as six writers. Anyway, before the boy goes into one of his episodes. I hate this movie so much. Yeah, and 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 she, they go into the house, and you and and she has her boyfriend, her best friend, and the hitchhiker, and and so and the, her best friend's boyfriend. Yeah, and her her best friend is a slut hoe, and she she sleeps with her man's. She never finds that out, yeah. but but that's it's, kind of, that's, that's it's a, padding. That's a plot point that goes absolutely nowhere. Yeah, and and they do, and as they're staying in the house overnight, the hitchhiker they leave, and again, this is really stupid. The hitchhiker says, "You know what? Go go on, guys. I'll clean up the house for you guys. Y'all go get dinner, and then you know." You can trust me. You've known me for a whole five hours. Yeah, you can trust me. Yeah. Yeehaw. And of course, he's a robber, and he's robbing them blind while they're getting you know, food supplies and stuff. And he's the first one to discover, oh my god, Leatherface is in the basement. Oh my god. Like, 70-year-old Leatherface? Don't, we said we were Okay, you're right. Yeah, whatever. Okay. 
Just leave it be. Yeah, just leave it be. <laughs> but yeah, and he gets killed, and they just think the guy, when they get back, robbed them, mm. and you know, that's it. I, I, I know I'm being rambly. The cook, it, the cook's gonna get killed. The, the hitchhiker got killed, and it's, they're not very good kills. They're really- One of them's okay. But the other, but the other, however many are in the movie, are pretty bad. These yeah. people, and I, I mean, I guess I shouldn't get me blamed. This is something, especially slashers do a lot. There's a lot of people here that are just here to get killed. Yeah. But they don't. You, some of them manage to be interesting, or at least you mm -hmm. care somewhat about them. This is not that movie. No. They just all die yep. one by one, and she's trying to figure out what the fuck is going on. And I'm bored telling you guys about yeah, this. Yeah, long story short, a uh, uh, cook gets killed. Then um, our, main, our main character stumbles upon Leather, uh, Leatherface. Leatherface doesn't know that they're related, so he's gonna uh, so he's gonna kill her. Um, he throw he like for some reason doesn't do this with any of the others. He brings her hair down into the meat cellar, and I guess is gonna do whatever the hell he feels like with her. And then the cook friend wakes up, uh, wakes up, he er, er, gets impaled, you know, like that scene from the original on the meat hook, yeah. but then they gotta make it all extreme, cause we gotta amp it up the gore values of the chainsaw, cause the original chainsaw was super gory. <sighs> Um, and cuts him in half of a chainsaw. Which I'm is, I guess, sure, the best kill? Yeah, it's the best kill, but I'm pretty sure they literally just made that so they would have an example for his, one of his fatalities in Mortal Kombat X. Uh, oh, anyway, she sees that, then she, is, she runs out, hides out to the, hides in the Sawyer family cemetery, which also has a open, open coffin. Uh, oh, co Vera. Yeah, Vera, who Leatherface. I guess in between killing the robber and them arriving, Leatherface brought, uh, dug her up and brought her out of the grave. Yeah. Don't know why. But anyway, she hides so in a coffin. So she can hide in a coffin, don't you know? Yeah, she hides in a coffin. Uh, coffin. Uh, Leatherface is going at it with the, uh, in 3D, because remember, it's 3D. So, woohoo, gotta keep throwing shit at the goddamn camera. Which, if it was a better movie, I would not have a problem with. Because I love me a cheap 3D gimmick in a slasher movie. But it doesn't work here. No, it doesn't work here a bit. And, and, yeah. and, and then we get, and then we've got the body count, and now we're down to her boyfriend and best friend who were fucking yeah. while all this was going on. Yeah. Lovely people, mm -hmm. and um, and they get in the car, and Leatherface chases them down, and uh, the car rolls over, yada yeah, yada. yada. Boyfriend dies, her best friend's hurt. She get, Leatherface is about to kill her, and she uh, escapes to the county Halloween fair, don't you know? Because they had to set it on Halloween, even though this is in Hattonfield, people. Uh, this is the part of the movie that really pissed you off. Too. Yeah, because Leatherface actually goes into the fairgrounds, and I just don't think, you know, as fucked up as this continuity is, and some of the movies went really off the deep end, not gonna say none of the other movies went off the deep end, I just don't think the character of Leatherface would go where there's that many people. Mm -hmm. If it was a handful of people, sure, but th th there were lights and people all around, it just doesn't seem like a Leatherface And a pig girl from, uh, from Saw for no random, for no reason. Yeah, basically, and she runs to the fair, and yeah. Yeah. Dep oh yeah, there's this random deputy played by Clint Eastwood's son. Yeah. Um, Dep uh, deputy Beef McCunky. Yeah, Deputy McCunky, as we kept calling he him. He does look a lot like his dad. He's yeah. not a bad looking guy. Yeah, he he sa he saves our main character from Leatherface. Leatherface throws his chainsaw at him. I mean, and at the camera. I mean, at him. So you know, and it and it misses. Leather and Leatherface runs off into the woods. Like he as he does, and she take, gets taken back to the police station, yeah. where the third act uh, in commences, and the yeah. third act is where this movie completely falls apart. Now it's time for the fun part. Well, it already was, but let's say falling apart was like loses here. All its redeeming it goes qualities. to here, basically. Yeah, it loses all its redeeming qualities, and she's locked up in this office. And of course, they left her with all the evidence, and yeah. she finds out who she is, and that these people that are running this town—it's a crooked little town. There's a mayor that was the the the, the head uh, guy that you know started the mob way back yeah. then. Yeah, because all because we because we elect all our 
every city's mayor based off how good of a, a mob he can form. That's how we got ours. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Whatever. And like he he wants revenge, and now that he knows that Leatherface and this gal, he wants them both wiped off the yeah. face of the earth. And oh, spoiler: the hunky McBeefcake is his son. The cop yeah. is his son. I, I know that should be shocking, but it's not. No, you'll see it coming yeah, a mile you'll away. See, I saw it coming in the first. I, by the way, I've already seen this a few before her. But he saw it like. Larry I saw it ages ago. I forgot. I entirely forgot Larry Fassin's. I thought Larry Fassin was just a high and by cameo, but he's like the mayor's henchman, basically. Yeah, he's still not a very big part, but he's in yeah, a little he's bit not more. Really that big of a And he dies like he does in every movie. Yeah, can you n name me one movie slash game where Larry Fassin doesn't die? It's kind of his thing, it which is. is cool. But yeah, and then we get this big showdown where they're at this old slaughterhouse yeah. where their family worked, mm -hmm. and um, it's Le and Leatherface. Uh, the, the girl's telling her, "It's Heather. It's Heather. I'm your cousin." And in the letter that Verna wrote to her, she said he knows about you, and she has this. Oh yeah, they all have these necklaces. Do you know the, the, the iconic Sawyer S, S necklace that were in bullshit. that was in every movie prior? The iconic didn't you see them wearing it all the time? Hitchhiker had a giant gold one like flavor plate. <laughs> Christ, this movie sucks. <laughs> It does. It fucking sucks. But they had it for this movie, and like her mama was wearing it, and there was a fire before she died, and I guess it was cl the baby was close to her, and it burned it on her chest. Leatherface sees that, so he knows she's family. And um, the, the, the our evil mayor guy is gonna kill them both, and <laughs> they. Uh, yeah, and, and, and you know, um, the sheriff, meanwhile, who's a good guy, Sheriff Hooper, because, you know, we have to name drop, uh, goes, I know where they're going, let's go, yeah, and, uh, and uh, he's going to shoot. You know, you know, yeah. and like the leather, I'm really proud. Okay, basically, I'm so, uh, I meanwhile, at, at the slaughterhouse, yeah. um, sh it's basically a giant Mexican standoff. Yeah. You got Sheriff, you got the mayor, you got Leatherface, you got the girl, Hello. you got Larry Fastin, you got Hunt. Oh, wait, we, we forgot about him after one scene, so he's off, but yeah, yeah. screw Clint Eastwood, son. Yeah. Um, so we have these four, uh, four characters in kind of a Mexican standoff. Um, the and Leatherface, Leatherface finds out he's his, his sister, yeah. her cousin, um, sh and frees her while, and she runs off while they're beating the shit out of Leatherface. And then she remembers family. Yeah, and then she runs back and stabs Larry Fasden with a pitchfork and tosses Leatherface's chainsaws oh, and says, not Do you think, cuz? I fucking hate that stupid line. It's so goddamn mind-blowing. Remind you, remind <laughs> you, this is a 180, cuz Leatherface can't at least two <laughs> led to the death of at least three of her goddamn friends. Yeah, but she's totally fine with it. Well, I mean, I, she, but she didn't know. But I mean, her best friend and her man were. Yeah, but they never know. They she never bastard. know about that. If they had that, if they had that scene go some, I have a feeling that probably got cut for time or something. But if they had, but that, but that, the fact that that plot's still in the movie and she never finds out that they were cheating on her, that is a massive hole in the character and the movie. So yeah, she just does a 180 and decides, well, since we're cousins, like, by a couple generations, <laughs> um, she, deci she decides to help him murder the town's mayor. Um, and our Sheriff Hooper, you know, shoot him! No, don't shoot him! Shoot him! Don't shoot him! And he, he, he doesn't particularly like the mayor. Yeah. And there, then we go a wrap around from the beginning, because in the beginning of the evil mayor guy says, you know, you can't escape the good book. What well, you know, well, fair's fair. Mm -hmm. And so he turned about to fair, fl uh, fair play, and he, uh, and he lets the Leatherface kill him. And yeah. said, and all he tells him, and you know, no law-abiding thing, just clean this mess up. Yeah. And no. walks. Off. Yeah, he literally just, mind you, did another phrase in this scene where you mentioned, also killed one of his deputies. Yeah, I did, but whatever. Whatever. Um, so yeah, we're and then almost done. we were almost done. And then Leatherface and What's Her Face go off to the uh, to the Sawyer house, and she cleans him in a very uncomfortable, almost incestuous scene. Please tell me I'm not the only one who got that feeling from it. I don't know. I wasn't really paying attention. I was just thinking, oh god, if I don't see the credit suit, I'm gonna hit the TV, and it's a nice TV. Yeah. 
Yeah, so she, uh, so that, uh, so, uh, so she cleans his, uh, so she cleans his face up, finally reads that goddamn letter, which basically explains, hey, so, your cousin's in the cell, he kills people, don't mention, don't worry about that, just gotta look he'll after, protect he'll you. protect you, just, you know, take care of him, feed him, you know, all that shit. All that shit, and she's just okay, whatever, sure, why not? Yeah. Um, what else am I gonna do, basically? Yeah. And yeah. We get the last shot of her taking or er, taking a food tray away, and he slams the door. Roll credits. The Thank end of God. The movie. Oh. I Christ. did not like this movie. This movie is a mess. Uh, would this be the worst Leatherface movie in the franchise? Would yes. this be, you know, the equivalent of Buster Rhymes telling Michael Myers trick or treat, motherfucker? Is that pretty much the equivalent? You know what? No. How are the resurrections a better movie than this? Yeah, I, I agree with you on this. Yeah. Uh, I'm torn though. I, I still don't know. Do I hate this movie as much as I didn't like Generations? I, I don't know. Uh, I really didn't like this movie, guys. It was sucks. It was predictable. It was boring, and the kills weren't very good. Kind of all the things you need for a good slasher. Yeah. You know, and no good one-liners. And I'm not like I don't hate one-liners. Like I said, Leatherface yeah, had Leatherface some great has some really ones good ones that we still. I fucking love. To, Christian yeah. loves that line. Yeah, I know. I fucking love Texas. I love that because like because we know people like that too. Yes, we do. Yes, yeah. we do. So yeah, no, I don't. You know. I'm, this movie is such a good mess, but I guess I can't be super mad at it because it did technically lead to Leatherface. I guess, but but I I still it, say this is probably in the top ten for worst horror movies of the 2010s. I know we're not out of them yet, but I'm pretty sure this is singed at least in the top ten for worst of the of the 2010s. This is recommendation, guys. If you were like me and had seen all the other Texas Chainsaw Massacres, which I think you should even even generations i think you should just for the batshit performance of matthew mcconaughey yeah. there is no reason to really see this it doesn't add any of the lore it's all convoluted as hell and it'll make you go cross-eyed and make your nose bleed if you sit here and really try to figure out a timeline and all that there's really no redeeming qualities and it's not just even on a dumb fun movie level it doesn't work no, so if you were like me and had just for whatever reason not bothered with this one don't, don't think okay I, I i can't call myself a true texas chainsaw massacre fan if i don't say it because you're real Really not missing anything. You're really not. You, like, you could spare this one. I wish I had. There's so many problems. You know, with this movie. because every other movie in this franchise, even the ones that I'm not the biggest fan of, there's at least something about them. You know. Original ones a masterpiece. Two has you know Bill Dennis, Mo Hopper. De Dennis Hopper and Bill Mosley. And it's you good. Do, even if it's you don't, yeah, even if you don't like two, you're one of those people that doesn't consider it you know an actual movie and we. You know, it's still better than the. It's still better made than this. You'll and, have a and, good time. Yeah, three. Go you, see my review. Yeah, three. Go see your review for why three is awesome. Next generation has Matthew McConaughey. The remake has the amazing performance by Arlie Ermey, and beginning also has some Arlie Ermey in. Yeah, you yeah. know that's ninety percent of why I like the remake as much as I do. Leatherface it's was great. a blast. Yeah, it was. It was one of the best movies. It was. It made my number it was, one. Yeah, it was both of our number ones last year. Yeah. Well, it was one. It was my number three. But yeah, it was your number one last it year. It was my number. It one. was really goddamn. It, it was really goddamn fun. And it added. I felt it added to the thing. Yeah, this it, takes away it from it. The thing about it is, Leatherface totally felt like, yeah, okay, this totally could have happened before the original. This yeah. feels like it totally couldn't have happened after. It just feels like, whoa. Yeah. How the hell? I think Chainsaw Two would be a more believable follow-up to this, and that has Dennis Hopper dual-wielding chainsaws battling Leatherface. It's one of his favorites. I love Chainsaw 2. I'm the Lord of the Harvest, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, it, it is a great movie, but this one is just a piece of shit, guys. It really it is. is. Really is. Um, I definitely stay away from it. And like I said, don't think to yourself, "Well, I'm not a true fan if I don't see it," because you really aren't missing. There's not anyone a performance that you're gonna miss. There's nothing to the story you're gonna miss, and the kills aren't cool. And you're not. You're just. And it feels long. It feels it like oh it's only God. like an hour and a half. God, this movie feels like two hours. At least, at least. So. Whereas Leatherface, you know, we were we were like, "Oh, it's already over." Yeah, and Leatherface, you know, and some of them you feel like. There's certain everybody that plays it. Of course, Gunner was the best, but everybody who's played Leatherface, you felt something for me. This guy was fun. 
He was fine for what he does. Yeah, he but wasn't terrible, but I didn't feel he was the only one. Yeah, he's the only one feel. I don't have really. Yeah, I don't like all of them have kind of their. Oh, they, they. Every movie, every movie kind of has Leatherface go into a different like stage. Uh, yeah, the first one is him as you know a child. child. Second one's the, like the rebellious teenager, hormones kicking in. And uh, third, third one, one is also is kind of continuing that. Fourth one's weird. A remake makes him like a super, a super brutal killer. Yeah. This one just... And Leatherface makes him very sympathetic. Yeah, Leatherface makes him a super sympathetic and interesting character. Yeah. This just kind of exists. Yeah, he's kind of like Michael Myers in the sense that he doesn't have any per personality. Yeah, there's zero personality in this ca in the character, uh, much like Michael Myers, but at least Michael Myers... That's what they supposed to do. His original movie had him with no personality. That was kind of this the This series, you know, the whole the ongoing of the Chainsaw sequels is giving Leatherface a different stage of life. Go see Leatherface through a different stage of life. Yeah, but no, can we recommend it? Absolutely no. not. Stay away. This is one I'm going to give all you horror rights a pass. If you, if you don't have to watch it, don't watch it. There's no reason to. No. You're not missing anything. No one's going to go, oh my god, you haven't seen that. Yeah. You know, unless you enjoy really bad movies. And I enjoy really bad movies. This yeah. movie just pisses me off. Yeah, it does. And, you know, it's just, it, it's kind of, no. And I don't know why Kim Hinkle or uh, Toby Hooper were a part of it, but money, I yeah. guess. So, money. Yeah, yeah. But it really yeah. raped him. It's, it, it is. It's the worst of the worst because at least, Matt, you're right, Matthew McConaughey, it was batshit crazy, but it was fun to watch him. Mm -hmm. it this was. one has no fun. So, yeah, yeah definitely thumbs down, guys. Uh, like I said, this is an oldie but a goodie. But like I said, if, if you're missing this one now to see and all of them, don't bother. Mm -hmm. And with that, do you have anything else to add? Uh, fuck this movie. <laughs> so, yeah. So, as always, we come to the conclusion of another Jen and Christian's vlog. If you enjoy the content on our channel and you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, please hit that subscriber button because we appreciate all the subscribers we get. And with that, we wish you a good day, a good evening, and we'll talk to you guys real soon. Bye. Fuck this movie. <laughs>